Does the idea of asking people for money make you want to feel like you just want to run away and die? <laughs> Maybe it's like you have developed your own program and you're like, okay, I've developed this program. It's amazing. I'm so excited. I can't wait to get it out there. And then someone's like, okay, well, how much does it cost? And then immediately you're just like freaking out. You fumble over your words and you're like, you just have it. Or like, I don't know. Or like, well, I don't know. What do you think? What do you want to pay? Like, if that's you, I just want you to know that that's totally normal. In the beginning, a lot of us feel that way. We get freaked out when people start asking us about the cost of a program because the idea of somebody paying you for something that you love so much or for helping them with their health or with anything is just overwhelming. So I'm Amanda Quinn. <laughs> and I'm Laura Jackson. And today we're going to be talking all about the idea of making impact and income and how you can start getting over the guilt of charging for your services. I feel like this conversation is so important because I do feel like probably every single person listening to this right now has had that feeling at some point. Oh, completely. And it's what it's, it's such an interesting topic to talk about too, because we're told our whole lives that we're supposed to you know, make money and work hard. And like, you know, when you work hard, you'll make good money and whatever. But then we're also told that like money is the root of all evil, that money is a negative thing. And if you <laughs> ask for money, you're greedy. So it's like, we're, how are we supposed to win when our whole lives were being told these mixed messages? And then on top of that, you go and try to open a business and you're trying to sort through all of this. And it's, yeah, it's really challenging when you first start. And I know, and I'm going to talk a lot about like my personal experience too, throughout this, but it's one of those things that you really have to recognize because if not, it will hold you back. It will, 100%. Um, so what I want to focus on first is just why we have that guilt. So you kind of touched on it, Laura, and I think you know, that understanding where it comes from, the why aspect is so important. And then we're going to follow up with talking about our top five ways that you can get over this today. So yes. the main reasons why you feel guilty, majority of people, is number one, I truly believe the strongest one is um, yes, money hangups, like you said, for sure, which is like, you feel weird about it because you have your own money hangups because like, it could be just that you just, you know, money for you is a weird thing. And like what you were saying, like where people feel like, okay, well, if I accept money, then it's wrong. Or if I charge too much, then I seem greedy and all of that. And that's like your own money hangup stuff that you need to do some work on. Yeah. Where, and every, and guys, everyone has them. So don't feel like, if you're like, oh, I felt like this my whole life and you know, I yeah. thought it was weird. Like everyone has a money blueprint. And I know we talk a lot about this on the podcast, but yeah. things always go back to your childhood. So you have <laughs> the way you feel about things go all the way back to when you were really little. So it's, it's some work to unravel that. So just know it's totally normal. <laughs> it's, no, and it's totally true. Like, I mean, you know, just talking about me personally, like I know even with my money stuff, it's like, I actually am the opposite of you in the sense that I feel like, just send money, get rid of money all the time. It doesn't matter. Like money doesn't have a ton of value to me for some reason, because I, when I was growing up, it's not that it doesn't have a ton of value. That's not the right way of saying it. But like when I was growing up, we just, we, my family had a lot of money. And so it was just not valued the same. And plus my parents showed love with stuff. So yeah. it was kind of like, that's my, so like money for me just doesn't have that same, I don't have that same like, nervous energy around money you know what I mean like in terms well, of it's also one of your like it's one of your love languages too it's one of your yeah you know yeah because that's how I was shown love was like by like my my dad would literally just hand me like a hundred dollar bill and just be like here go buy yourself something yeah. you know what I mean like and that when I was like 12 I'm like oh okay and like twelve dollars a hundred dollars at 12 seems like crazy so for me it's like I see when I when we were starting our business and we would start getting money coming in or charging for money, I never really saw it as a big thing because for me, I felt like, well, yeah, like money is just this exchange, but it doesn't, it didn't really have like that much of a hang up until they started actually having to start budgeting and things like that as a family. And then I started having more recognition of like the value, if that makes sense. Well, yeah. And the thing with money is it's just a, it's a form of energy, right? Yeah. It's a form of, of transactional energy, just as much as like a hug is to someone like you are giving and receiving. So you give money and yeah. they receive a service and you receive, like, it's just a transaction. So like I could trade this cup with you for your services, but instead I'm giving you a certain amount of dollars. 
-hmm. But because of the way that society has made us see money for such a long time, and especially as women, and I'm going to be like, call in the woman card here. (laughs) No, because for so like, it's the way society sees money, the way that, um, the way that we've, the stories we've been told all the time about having money or spending money, or especially the idea of feeling guilty about spending money on yourself or charging people. It's like, you're not being a good caring woman, but that's not true. So, I mean, we have some other podcasts about the money side of it um, and getting over your money, like rewiring your money blueprint, which like I said, this is work that's so important. If you are in business, or if you plan on opening a fitness or nutrition business, you have to recognize that this is something you have to think about because it literally will hold you back or it will, it might not, might hold you back from even starting your business, but it might also hold you back from growing your business because as you're, as you start to get more clients, people tend to think, Oh, you know, things are rolling. You have to constantly be putting that energy in the form of money into your business to help grow it. So 100%. We got to try to start to see money more as energy. Like it's just transactional energy and you know what energy goes or what what do we say? Energy flows flows where energy energy goes. Mm -hmm. So the more energy that you're putting into your business, the more it will grow. Definitely. Um, and then just going back to like the whole, cause I kind of went on, like, we kind of went out, out sideways a little bit talking about like hanging up stuff, not sideways, but I think just, you know, going back to the, why we feel guilty. I think that there's two other reasons too, why we actually feel really guilty. Um, I'm sure there's more, but these are the main ones. The other one is the whole imposter syndrome. Like we don't feel qualified in order to receive money for those services. Like we feel like, oh my gosh, I just started out in my business or, you know, this is my very first client. I should probably charge them like either nothing or really like a little bit of money, even though I feel like I want to make $500, I'm only going to charge them a hundred. So this is also why most people don't charge enough money is this whole imposter syndrome because they feel as though that they're stepping into a role that they're not qualified to be offering or to be offering those services. And we get that. Like, I know, you know, we always had a certain price point, but even when we started our academy programs, you know, it was like this feeling of like, you know, do we offer the services at a lower rate? We didn't, luckily. We went with like our gut and we knew exactly the value that we were offering because we did these other steps that we're going to show you. But I think this is a big thing that happens that people step into a role, especially once you just get newly certified and you're kind of like, or start a business fresh and you're like, I don't. I don't feel like I'm that person. Like, why would they pay me this when they can pay someone else, you know, the same rate who's been doing it for 10 years kind of thing. Well, and the imposter syndrome, it's so fascinating because Mm -hmm. it actually was um, only kind of named and and found out about in the late seventies. And it was done, of course, again, back to the women part on a study of high achieving women. And it was women who had this feeling of feeling like a fraud and not feeling like you know enough. And if you're someone who is a course collector, as we like to call them, you're constantly taking courses and more courses and more courses, but not really doing anything with them. You're someone who probably has this because you're feeling like I need more. I need to know more before I can go ahead and move forward with it, which will definitely make it really hard for you to start to a charge your worth. (laughs) Yeah. And, and charge what you're worth for your program. It's like, because you're going to constantly feel like, okay, well, wait, I don't want to, you know, charge for my fitness boot camp this much because I've only been teaching for six months. So I'll wait until I do three more certifications and five years have gone by and blah, 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 blah. And then I'll get yeah. to the point where I charge this. And exactly. that's even something for us, you know, when we, when we started Fitchix boot camp, and I even had people saying to me, well, why is someone going to pay $159 for your boot camp when they could pay $30 a month for a gym membership and yeah. do classes at the gym? Yeah. And this would play into my mind too. And I'm like, yeah, who am I to be charging this much money? But then we're like, no, we're offering a program. We're not yeah. just offering a gym membership where you don't show up. We're offering a program. And that of course goes into too, you know, pos- positioning your, your products in a way that's going to give them more value too. Of course. Like in creating a value um, perception as well. Yeah. Um, and then I think the last thing that I just want to touch on when it comes to feeling guilty is also the whole idea of just you not actually valuing your skills, not recognizing what they're actually worth. And this all ties in together. Like they all kind of go together, but it's like valuing your skills is kind of like when someone's like, but all I'm doing, you hear people say this all the time, like, 
oh, I'm only a personal trainer or all I'm offering is just these personal training sessions or whatever. It's like, no, like you are helping someone change their lives. And this is going to actually tie into like our top five ways to get over this is the number one way to get over this feeling of like not valuing your skills is to recognize what you're actually offering and be realistic about what you're actually doing which is you're actually helping people, especially in health and fitness, you're helping people change their lives and potentially change their entire blueprint for their future, their health in their future, preventing disease, preventing you know, um, further health issues along the road. So you're actually completely helping them reshape their life. And if you don't recognize that, you will not value it. They value it, but you don't. And that's like the weird thing, right, that I find about the value side is that like, Clearly, people are valuing what you're offering because they are calling you, they're contacting mm-hmm. you, they're emailing you. But for some reason, you have this thing where you're not valuing it. So you need to like step aside and look at like, okay, like this is really what I'm doing here. And make sure that if you can, if you can honestly say that what you're offering will provide the results that you are suggesting, you need to recognize that. If not, then you need to go back and rework your programs. <laughs> and, and no, and it's true though. Like yeah. even with all of our students, like when we ask them, we're like, what is it that you're bringing to the world? And they need to know because they need to know what the value is of their program to sell it, right? Yeah. But also to make sure that they can stay motivated to keep going when the days are hard, right? Because your yeah. why will keep you going. And I would say just like pull out a piece of paper, set a timer for five minutes and just write. Like write all the things that your program or your coaching or your workshop or whatever it is that you're giving, yeah. right? Just set it for five minutes and write down all the things. Don't overthink it that the, like the value it brings, not that, oh, it includes that, you know, five, yeah, recipes, not the stuff. <laughs> no, not the features and the benefits. Not that it includes like, you know, five smoothie recipes and an at home workout. No. What is somebody getting if they come to, let's say your, your workshop? Yeah. So they're leaving with the knowledge of how to now create green smoothies so they can bring this back to their families and do them on the daily. You're teaching them about blood sugar balancing, which will now save their life. Like it's not just like Amanda was saying, like think about the bigger thing of the why. And that way, anytime you're feeling like, well, I can't charge, look at that sheet of paper where you've yeah. written down all these things and be like, actually, you know what? I'm giving them a lot of value and a lot of things that are going to help them in the long run. So, and it will make it easier for you to get over this hump. 100%. Yeah. So let's dive into like the top five ways for you to get over it. So number one was exactly what we were just talking about, which is remembering and reminding yourself of the impact that you're making. So the impact is on someone's health and wellness. Like you really do have to understand that. So do that tip that Laura just said about writing down that list and like using that as your why and your guide to help remind you about the value that you're creating. Number two is remember the opportunity cost. How much money, time, and energy are you saving your clients by offering this product, this service, this program, these classes, whatever it is that you're offering, how much money, time, and energy are you saving them? So that could be like, Think about it from a perspective of put yourself in their shoes. If they are going to be, you know, signing up for gym memberships that just go unused because let's face it, majority of people sign up for gym memberships and they do not show up. That is kind of what the gyms are counting on is that you just don't show I know, up. Because if everybody showed up, then there would be not enough space in this, in the gym, in the facility yeah. for everybody. Um, how much money are you saving them on fad diets that they might be like, investing in buying into diet pills quick fixes other programs which we do not endorse in any way but it's like how much money are you going to be saving them on all of those things that they're going to like you know they're not going to work in the first place and second of all it's going to end up trashing their metabolism anyway so it's like just how much opportunity cost are you saving them um The third thing that you need to do the other way to get over this sort of making impact and income is start talking about money from the very beginning, Mm -hmm. make it so that it's super clear what your price point is and make sure that your clients understand. I'm not talking like as soon as you get them on the phone or as soon as like they ask you something and you know, like, Oh, you know, what do you do for a living? And you're like, I try, I offer personal training and it's $50 an hour. Like you're not doing it like that. But what I'm saying is like, once you get to the point where you know that they want to Um, they want to take on your services or products. Make sure that the pricing is super clear so it's not awkward after. So you're not all of a sudden just shooting them an invoice and then they're like, oh, 
it that much, I had no idea, right? So you just want to make sure that that's really, really clear. And maybe having a price list, um, if you have a sales page or if you, you know. Well, even for us, sorry to interrupt you, but like even yeah. within, within Fitchix Academy, one of the bonuses that we give for the Fitness and Nutrition Expert Program is what we call the, um, the Fitness Professional Coaching Toolkit. And it's yeah. literally a script of how to have this conversation in what we call a discovery call. So basically when someone calls you and says, okay, I'm interested in your services, tell me about them and how much you charge, it will walk you through how to do it. And literally- Not in an awkward way. <laughs> not in an awkward way, but in a way yeah. that you know it's gonna flow and you make sure that you're asking the right questions to your, to your potential clients and giving them the right information. Because again, these are the things that we're never taught how to do. So it's totally natural to feel uncomfortable doing them, right? If you've never well, tried to sell well, a program or, you know, but the more you, like Amanda said, start talking about it right from the beginning. And if you have these tools, like the scripts, eventually you won't need them anymore, but it will give you that sense of confidence. At least you have something there to walk through as mm -hmm. opposed to just talking blindly. 100%. Yeah. So definitely if you don't have a script, write one out, or if you need one, it does that. <laughs> yeah. Um, but but it, yeah, it, it's really uh, challenging because it's like, you know, I know for me when I, because my background was marketing, right? I was in business, background was in marketing. So we would support the salespeople. Your background was in sales. But yeah. for so long, I kept on to this mentality, which guys, we all have to get rid of, is that I was not a salesperson. When we opened our business, I took care of the marketing. I took care of a lot of the systems. I took care of a lot of the content development. But Amanda was sales. Mm -hmm. And I had to get over this. And it actually wasn't only up until a few years ago that I really did because I had just said to myself, well, I'm not a salesperson, but yeah. every person who owns your own business, whether you have other people working for you, you are a salesperson. You are an, a bookkeeper. You are a marketer. You are all of those things because you have to be. And it's not That's a dirty me. word. It's like being no. a, like selling someone something if you're selling them something that they don't need and you're selling them something on false claims or being shady yes then, then you're like a snake oil salesman yeah then, <laughs> it, then it can be nasty but yeah. if you are literally sharing with somebody like this is going to actually like and that's what for us i have no problems talking about this anymore talking about our fitness and nutrition expert program talking about any of our done for you programs or challenges or whatever it is because I know they're created, they're so, the content is so good, and I know they will transform whoever participates in them's lives. So that for me makes it so much easier. Yeah. But it's going yeah, on a little I mean, change in there. No, no, that's <laughs> cool. And I mean, and I 100% I agree with you. And I think, you know, me, of course, coming from a background of sales, but my sales were different, you know, even though my sales background was, it, but I always had the same approach, right? It was always the same approach. It was always an authentic conversation. It was always about building a relationship and it was always about really understanding what their needs were. And yeah. if you follow that process, you are going like, and that's when I used to sell sponsorship for um, the Toronto International Film Festival, working with like a bank and selling them like logo space and stuff. It still followed the same process. It was still about finding out their desires, their needs, their why, understanding how we can make impact with this rather than it was just like, oh, let's just slap your logo somewhere. It's like, okay, well, that doesn't make sense for you. Let's figure out how we can make this better. And we created like such cool programs where we had like artists designing, you know, customized shirts and things like that. And we were giving them away to charity and stuff. Like we always came up with creative ways. So even with your own business, it's like figure out how, like your why for your clients, have that conversation so that you can truly help them and make sure that you can truly help them. And then the sale part is so easy because then That's it's not a sale. It's like, totally. you're just you're just providing the solution to their problem. And it's I, not the same feeling. I do think with a lot of people, and if you're listening to this right now and you're like, yeah, that's me. Like I really struggle. I feel so awkward and uncomfortable. And so many people do. Literally get a script, get yeah. like, write it out, say it out loud before someone even calls you. Ask okay. your partner or your kids or just even in the mirror. Because honestly, guys, the biggest hump to get over when it comes to anything, whether it's sales or coaching or teaching a fitness class is the very first time you do it. And I always say, to like our, yeah, I always say to our students, I'm like this, this nervousness or this uncomfortableness before teaching your first co-op class, it will never be this level again. It will never feel this level of like, Oh my God, because once you actually do it once and you realize, wait a second, this is not that scary. Yeah. Actually, this is kind of fun. 
you will start to see, oh my gosh, like I literally can do this. And then you'll still have the nerves. And that's where, of course, anything in life practice comes in. Yeah. But you will that first time. So get in the habit of saying it out loud because having the knowledge and you're studying your, your sales programs, you're talk, thinking about, yeah, I can talk about money. But then if you're not actually doing it, whether it be in front of the mirror or to a family member, friend, volunteer, whatever, it's going to feel really, really awkward. So just start yeah. getting it out there. Definitely. Um, and then the fourth thing, the, the fourth, <laughs> fourth, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, I have to plug in. I'm, I'm going to lose. Uh... Oh, okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't fall off of this again. Like I, this happened once before when we were recording and you just disappeared. So it's cool. <laughs> um, so the fourth thing is getting paid ahead of time. So this is so key guys, because, and what I mean by this is getting paid for your full services before you do the personal training session before you start the online program, before your fitness classes begin. Getting paid ahead of time takes away a lot of awkwardness. It also takes away this negative money mindset that your clients might have. Because the whole thing is, and this is, there's, um, there's like research that shows that it's like when people have to reach into their wallet or, you know, put in their credit card or whatever, there's always a little bit of like a weird negative impact that happens in that transaction for them. Even though you're providing a solution, it's like they're giving away that energy, but oftentimes there's so many things that are tied to that. Right. And so if you do that at the end, you're leaving your client with that feeling versus if they do it in advance when they show up to your personal training session or they show up to your Facebook lives for your group training or they show up to your group fitness classes or whatever it is it's no longer a thing it's like in the past so now the only focus is on them and the products and services that you're offering so rather than having that as their underlying sort of oh yeah now I have to pay you that's already taken care of and now you can just focus on the service and getting them the results that they're paying you for Totally. Um, and then the fifth thing is, and I love this, I love this point, is remember that it's business, it's not personal. So what I mean by this, guys, is like other businesses out there do not apologize for their cost, their whatever they're charging. They're not out there apologizing for it. Like when you go, um, <clears throat> excuse me, when you go to a store and you go at like, Laura, when you go to like the corner store and you're like, I'm going to buy this apple <laughs> or at the market or whatever, I, you know, and you're like, I'm going to buy this apple. They're not like, oh, I'm really sorry, but it's like going to cost you a dollar, right? Like they're not apologizing. They're just like, oh, the cost is a dollar. Like that's how much we charge. Or if you go to any store, a clothing store, whatever. It's yeah, like, I just went yesterday and bought a new bed frame and yeah. I was like, it wasn't like, I was like, okay, this cost a thousand dollars. Uh, can I give you $6? <laughs> right. That's what I mean. They're not apologetic for it either. They're just like, it costs a thousand dollars because that's what it costs. There's no reason for it or anything else. That's a little different. Cause it's like an, like a store that has like a product. But when you're talking, when you're talking about your services, what I'm saying is you don't have to apologize for it. Like it's like, if you want to charge a thousand dollars for a personal training session, don't apologize for it. That's, that might, you might not get a lot of clients, but for a thousand dollars for a PT session. But my point is, is that you don't have to apologize for it. You can just like, as long as you know the value and you know what it is that you're offering, there is no apology required. Own it and be comfortable yeah. with, like owning that price point and owning that offering. And I also think just to add to that too is, because this is something that will come up, you yeah. will have people who will try to lowball you, who will try to negotiate your prices with you. Yeah. And be warning, if you do, this will become a very slippery slope. Because, and we, even way back in the day when we first started Fitchix Bootcamp, we, and we were, you know, checking what the market was charging and figuring out how much to charge for our programs. And then there was a period of time where we're like, you know, do we change our pricing? Yeah. But then you're, if, if someone is not willing to pay or see the value in what you offer, that's fine. Mm -hmm. Whatever the reason may be, they're not a fit for you, but don't start feeling like you need to change everything you're doing to accommodate other people. Mm -hmm. Because if somebody is not going to pay, let's say $99 for your services, they're not going to pay if you change it to 79. Yeah. Like these are the people who are either they, they are not going to pay anything. They want it for free or they're continually, they're not going to be committed. 
So mm -hmm. stick to it and know too that you're doing your clients a disservice if you start negotiating and giving special deals to everybody or people are constantly trying to barter you down or whatever it is. Don't do it. Yeah. No, don't do it. And don't just, let... And they're just, the worst clients too. They will be the worst clients for you. I promise you that. And just to add to that, I think, you know, it's also don't let your client dictate how your business runs, yeah. right? Like it's the same thing that we teach even in the fitness and nutrition program where we, when I'm talking about group fitness and I'm talking about when you're leading a class, be the leader in that class. Don't let someone, if someone is like, oh, do we really have to do circuits? It's like, yeah, that's what the, that's what I planned and that's what we're doing. It's not, it's not about like, oh, do you not want to do that? Okay. Like let's do this instead. You have to stand in that space in that place of like ownership and take ownership for your business as well as the same way you would take ownership for your programs, your classes, your services that you're offering. You want to stay in that same stance. So if you have someone coming to you and saying, Oh, well, can you just give me a hundred dollars off or something? It's like, no, like this is my product. This is what I'm offering. This is the value. And this is the transformation I'm going to provide to you. So own that and be okay with it and don't apologize for it. Don't be like, no, sorry, I can't offer you that discounted price. It's just like, no, this is the cost of the program because this is what you're going to be receiving. And I value myself enough. So then you need to value me as well. And if you don't, then that's cool. There's other people that do. Well, and that used to be a huge thing for me. I, and even still now, yeah. I'm like, I used to always say like, this is my house. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when I be teaching a class in my <laughs> or in whatever, like this is right now, this is my house and I set the rules. Yeah. And when you're coming into it, you're following my rules or you can go somewhere else. And that's cool. Yeah. But when you're in my house, you take off your shoes. You know what I mean? Like yeah. <laughs> you do extra burpees, you do it this way, but you know, you're not going to come in here and tell me how I'm going to do my, do things. So. Exactly. And it takes time to get to that stance guys. Yes. But if you do these steps that we talked about, and if you do this list of like understanding your why and understanding your value and having your script and all those things, it will take away so much of that anxiety. I yeah. promise you, I promise you. So just please follow those steps, make the notes, get set up. And of course, if you are someone who's listening right now and you're like, okay, cool, I'm not certified yet, or I want to get certified, I want to start my own business, you need to make sure that you check out our upcoming Fitness and Nutrition Expert Certification Program. Um, you can go to fitchicksacademy.com forward slash FNE brochure, where you can download our brochure. It's amazing. It'll tell you more about our certification program. And we talk through all of this stuff in the program, as well as, as Laura mentioned, as one of the bonuses of registering early, you also receive our total coaching toolkit. So we'll give you the scripts. So I'll give you my, I actually wrote the script for you. So you get my sales scripts on how to have those discovery calls and what to do and to make it less awkward. So if you want that stuff, you need to register soon so that you get, uh, take advantage of those early bird bonuses. All right. Okay, guys, have an amazing day, and we will talk yeah. to you soon. Okay, bye, everyone. Bye.